Hi guys, it's Mike White again, and I've got another tutorial for you. This time we're going to be working with images, specifically with images that are going to be used in my Baby Banners mod for a specific client of mine, Fabric Mart Fabrics. And, you know, this is just a good example site, a good uh, example of how to work with images. We're going to cover some Photoshop tips, um, some specific Xcart tips, and uh, also some specific tips to working with the Baby Banners module. But, you know, you're going to pick up things that you can work with uh, anywhere in Xcart and with CSS in general. So let's get started. First, let me explain what we have going on here. You know, this is an instance of my Baby Banners module. And, uh, you know, we have several images here. And you know, when you default load the page, it's going to do some slideshow uh, type functionality here between these five different images that the clients uploaded and selected. And they've got some nice looking banners on this site. And uh, so I thought it'd be a good example. Um, down here we see another instance of the Baby Banners module being used in a different way just to display a static banner. And if they were to add more banners here, they would just stack up underneath. Okay, so um, first of all, the basic problems that we're running into, this is a great slide to stop on there, hold on. This uh, is the caption area. And as you can tell, it's not really working out with this banner. There's another problem that you might not be able to tell from this recording, but the image itself is looking a little bit fuzzy. And the reason that is, is we resized it, or you know, the client resized it, and it just wasn't done properly, the resizing. Uh, there's really nothing quite wrong with leaving it like this, but it could look better. And, and I want to talk about how to make that happen, how to properly resize images in Photoshop, which, you know, there's another application you can get out there on the web for free that can do everything Photoshop can do uh, for the most part. And it's called GIMP. And I highly recommend that application for those that don't have a budget to spend uh, on Adobe Photoshop. But I do also recommend Photoshop as the best application for image editing that's available today. Okay, now this tutorial is not going to be as organized as most that I do. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of rambling because I'm, I'm going to fumble through this just like I would if I was working for a client. Um, and you'll see all the mistakes that I might make or past that I might take that are wrong. Um, hopefully I won't make many of those, but we're just going to go through and try to uh, tackle these two issues. One, uh, educating the client on how to properly resize these images so we don't have any quality loss. And two, uh, we're going to look at moving this uh, banner overlay down and uh, maybe changing the color. Uh, you know, right now it's, 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 I think that it would work out better for if it was down all the way, you know, to the bottom of this div. Um, it'd be easier for the client to work with on some images. And then also, you know, I want to change the color to more match their uh, logo color. So first let me show you how, what's going on here. I'm all logged into the back side of the site. And I'm on the uh, Baby Banners page, Banner Management. And, you know, here's all the banners that are loaded into the site. And you see just one of them has this test, I, you know, caption, okay? Now, what I'm going to do first is look and inspect this element here and see what, what's controlling it. So I'm going to right-click and inspect element. I'm using Google Chrome. I really like the way uh, Chrome lets us do things like this. I'm just going to scroll down so that that area is in view. And if I hover over this P class flex caption test, I can see that that is indeed the area I want to affect. Um, here's the match CSS rule right here. The padding is set to 2%. Now I'm going to assume that's probably 2% of the entire div that it's contained in. And that is probably what's bumping it off the bottom. And then here I see the background has a set color RGBA, um, you know, which is also that A uh, at the end there is given at the alpha. And we need to change these other values to match, um, you know, this logo. Okay, so it, it tells me, you know, that this, this is CSS is, I think, being combined uh, by Xcart. So it's kind of confusing. You can't tell where the CSS is coming from easily. 
Now you can turn off the speed up um, JavaScript. Let's see where that is. I think that's in general settings. You know, use speed up tool for CSS. We could turn that off and I think we would see the exact, um, well, let's test it. Let's turn that off. Told you I would take risks with this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And I'm going to inspect that element again. I think it's the last slide. Inspect element. And look, now we've got, you know, it's telling us where this is coming from. And it says baby banners.css, but it's off the screen. It says xcart444, which is the test directory that we're working in, slash skin, slash fabric, which is the custom skin that I've set up for this client. And then slash module, slash baby banners, baby banners.css. Let's go find that in the xcart admin. So I'm going to go to uh, content. And I'm just going to right click edit templates and open link in new tab so I don't lose my place. And I'm going to go to fabric, like, just like it said. So we're already at xcart444 slash skin. And now we just are going into the fabric directory, which is the custom skin for, for this site. Um, now I'm going to go to modules, just like it said, and baby banners. And there's the baby banners.css. Let's open up this file. Okay, so instead of, uh, you know, just scrolling through this big long file, let's just type in flex. And that's taking us down to where the jQuery flex slider. I didn't write this slider. It's by Tyler Smith. And it's MIT license, which means you can do whatever you like with it. And that's, he's really wonderful to provide that to us. Okay, and so I see flex caption right here. And there's width. 96% there's all the information we saw okay so let's just change this padding to O it was 2% and let's see background RGBA okay to figure out what color I need and what inform, you know values I want to put in here I'm going to open up Photoshop I'm going to zoom in this is my original design for this site and there's my uh, palette that I've been using and I'm going to select that center color okay and it's 077 a one now in RGB Photoshop is wonderful it shows us right here um, you know hue saturation and value but then it shows RGB so I'm at 7 114 161 okay just gonna hit cancel seven one fourteen one sixty one, and let me get that page back up. Okay, and so here we go. I'm just gonna plug those values in. Was that right? I've got to check. Seven one fourteen one sixty one. And that's what we've got. And we still have the 0.3, which is the alpha value of that background. So let's just click Save and go back and see if our changes have had effect. All right. I'll get rid of this for the time being. Let's look at that last slide. Ooh, yes, it has. But it's kind of had some effects that we don't want. It's still bumped off. And it's lost its, uh, its padding on either side, which I did like. Um, I'm also not crazy about the alpha value. Let's go ahead and hit flex again. Go back down. So we do want the padding at 2%. And we're slightly at a loss as to what's causing that uh, to bump in at the bottom at the moment. So let's go back and look again at that area and see what's causing it to have that extra little you know bump out there at the bottom. So I'm going to inspect the element again. 
and scroll down so we can see it. And let's look at this. Now we could also just look through the CSS and see what's going on, but I like to look at it in this view. And I like the ability to hover over it because it visualizes it for me. Oh, okay, that orange part uh, looks like margin to me. And I don't see a margin setting here. So what we probably, we're probably getting the space just on the default uh, browser settings for paragraph margins. Because, you know, I see it as a, as a paragraph, is the HTML tag that's encompassing that caption. So let's go ahead and just set the margin, uh, since it looks like it's unset. So let's go back to the CSS, and let's search again for flex, so we can get to the right area. And here we go. There's that flex caption again. Let's just add the margin just like this. And we can just set it to zero. And since we didn't tell it top, bottom, left, or right, we it's going to affect all four sides. Let's hit save. And refresh. And there it is. Now it's all lined up with the bottom. Now let's look at how we would make uh, a banner that we wanted to add to this. You know, how would we go about creating a banner for this, uh, to add to this slider? Once again, I'm going to take a second to mention GIMP. You know, GIMP is a, a wonderful tool, and I really believe in open source software. GIMP stands for the New Image Manipulation Program, and you can go right to their page, and let's see, there's download right there. GIMP for Windows, download GIMP 2.6.11. That's the installer you want. Uh, or at least if you're running a Windows machine. So Photoshop, though, is the leader, of course, and it's the best application on the market today. Uh, one of its features that people don't realize, you can just right-click an image, uh, and in, in Chrome, I'm just choosing Copy Image. Now I'm going to pull open Photoshop, and I'm just going to go to File, New, and it already has my uh, width and height pre-filled for me. So, you know, that's just a handy little time saver. And if I wanted to, I could hit Control V and paste the image in, but I don't want to uh, because I'm planning on making a new banner. And I was just using that to, you know, set my uh, height and width, okay? So I'm gonna save this. And this is a fabric site, so I'm gonna save it as Shetland wools banner because uh, we're going to make a banner advertising some of the wool products they have on this site and now I've got a uh, picture that I found earlier I'll show you where I got it from uh, this is a great little site for your uh, free stock photos I use it all the time I don't like to pay for things if I can avoid it and, you know, you can find all sorts of great things on this site. Um, I, I highly recommend it. You know, here we go. We, we just started looking for people, and we've already found this wonderful guy. Okay, so let's get back to making our banner. Now, I have got, uh, like I said, this, this hatboybrim.psd, and I have got him all chopped out. It's a, taking a while to load because it's a huge image. And you can see he's all chopped off the background when I got the image, um, which is quite a large image. You know, we've got quite a lot of resolution here to work with. Um, you know, he was on white, and I chopped him out. Uh, the way I chopped him out is I just went to uh, my pen tool, and I started making a path. I'll show you that real fast. You just kind of zoom in here, and, you know, you just start going along the image okay and it's just like setting little vertices and you can also you know click and drag to make curves you know if you need to follow the brim of this hat uh, you just set one here and then you know maybe you want to set another one like right here and just drag it pull it out okay and then you set another one here and and that didn't work out for me because you know I need this uh, other handle to be dragged okay so you can just kind of play with it like that until you have the, uh, you know, a mask is what you're, what you're basically building. And you finish off the path 
uh, on the other side. You know, if I was going to try to finish this off, I would have to connect back with my original vertice, and then I would have that path, um, and I can mask everything out around that. Okay. So uh, after you have your mask, uh, what we're going to do is you know select this outline mask. Okay. And I'm going to imagine I hadn't already done this before, so I'll just go ahead and delete this layer. Okay. And I'm going to duplicate this layer. And you can either go to Layer, New, Duplicate Layer. You can right-click it, choose Duplicate Layer. That's the easiest way. Okay, and I'm going to call this Boy. And, and then I'm going to go to my path. And I'm going to right-click it and make selection. Okay. Now when I make selection, you want anti-alias checked. You also want your feather radius. I like to put a feather radius. My style is to go slightly within the contours that I want and then feather it out just a bit so I get a real clean edge. Okay. So now it's made my selection and I can go to select inverse or I can just shift control I. Okay. And that's going to select everything outside of my previous selection, as you can see here. And then uh, I'm just going to hit delete. So now what we have is, is a nice chopped out image. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on our new banner. So I'm just going to right click and choose duplicate layer. But this time I'm going to choose the other document, Shetland Wool's Banner PSD, the one we just created. Okay. Now I'm going to go over here. He is not being seen, and that's because he's off the page. Now, the easiest way, I'm just hitting Control minus to zoom way out, okay? I have a huge image here, and I'm going to hit Control t and move it up. Photoshop kind of locks it to that left corner if you have snapping turned on. And then I'm going to hold Shift and drag this down to about the size I think I'm going to use this at, okay? Now let's zoom back in, control and the plus key, right up there next to backspace. And I'm back to 100%, so I'm really looking at reality. Now before I resize this any further, I'm going to convert it to a smart object. I went ahead and shrunk it down to about the size I need, but now I might want to play and go back and forth uh, resizing this image. Now if I were to shrink it down real small and then drag it back out, I'd lose uh, pixel data. And so I would not, uh, I would not have the same image. I would lose. I would have fuzziness. So you know, to avoid that completely, I'm just going to right-click this and convert it to a smart object. You don't have to do that, but it, it sure gives you some flexibility to change your mind later. And now, you know, I'm going to take into account uh, our little uh, banner overlay with the captions, and I, I don't want his chin to get covered up. You know, I want it. I want the caption to be kind of hovered over this area right here. Uh, I'm going to move him a little over, and I'm going to move him a little down so he's not quite at the top. I might shrink him like this, but this looks right to me. I don't think it's going to uh, interfere with the caption, and that's one of my goals is to show the client how to you know work with captions and use them because we really want those captions uh, because that's actual text that Google can read. You know, any text that I put right here on this image, Google's just not going to be able to read that. Um, and so, you know, it's a nice thing since these banners are going on the home page uh, and they're going to be changed frequently. It's a good idea to make sure there's some text that Google can read and see that stuff updating. Great place to stuff some keywords if you can. Okay, so now let's start making this look a little better. I'm going to hit Control Shift N to uh, create a new layer. Okay, and I'm going to name this layer Gradient. Now, I also could have gone to Layer, New, Layer. Okay, so you know, if you forget that, I'm going to drag Gradient down below Boy. And then I'm going to go get some nice colors. So this is my little palette again. And I'm clicking the foreground color and selecting this main color. And then I'm going to click the background color and select this lighter color of the same, uh, the same shade. Now I'm going to pick my gradient tool. If you hold down here, you have a paint bucket and a gradient tool. Um, yours might show the paint bucket. You need to select that gradient tool. Okay. And I can edit what gradient I want. Uh, but I'm just going to go with the default one here. 
Um, there's several styles. You know, I could I could drag it out like this. Um, if you hold shift and drag, you'll always go on one of these axes, okay? And that's really convenient. Um, you can, sorry about that. Okay, I hit Control Z in Photoshop to uh, take back my last command. If I want to keep going, I hit, hit Control Alt Z, and likewise Control Shift Z steps forward. Um, now, Control Z just usually steps back between two variations. So, like for instance, I drag out this. I've changed my gradient style to uh, you know spread out in both directions, and I held Shift when I did that. And now if I you know, want to see my change, I can go back and forth with just Control-Z. But if I want to go back further, Control-Alt-Z. Okay, so the gradient style that I've chosen for this is this rounded starburst. And I'm just going to go right behind his head and drag out pretty far. And that kind of gives us a little subtle effect of, of light coming from behind his head and traveling across the page. Now we need to add a message to this. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, is pop over to the uh, web page and just print the screen so I can, I can use it to line things up for myself. Uh, I'm going to hit Control V. Oh, to print screen, I'm sorry. You hold Alt and hit the print screen key. It's up there next to F12. And now I'm hitting Control V to paste that. And it's, it's pasted it right in between the boy and the gradient, which is perfect. And I'm just going to pull this up here and use this to line up. I'm fine-tuning with the arrow keys. Um, now I can avoid this. And I can also see, yeah, that's, a, that's off his chin very nicely. So it's just perfect for what I want. Um, so I can uh, hit Control-Shift-N. Or actually, I'm just going to grab the text tool. Now if you just click... Uh, you'll get a text box or you know text line started but if you click and drag you'll actually create a text box and that's what I usually do it, it goes ahead and defines the you know the margin so that I know that I'm in the right area and uh, in this case we're advertising these Shetland wools so I'm going to type save And you can tell already I want to adjust my text box because that last little part that I wrote just wrapped. And that's not what I want there. So I'm just going to hold shift and drag this out until it fits. Okay. Now let's get rid of this Like Us on Facebook banner background that we used to line up. And let's go get uh, a better color um, for our text. And I'm just going to pick this light orange here because that should stand off nicely. And white would be a good selection for this too. You know, I really recommend black or white for text if you can help it. Um, but I do try to get creative whenever I can. So we're going to use this light orange. Okay, that looks pretty nice. And the last thing we're going to do is add a subtle drop shadow. Um, I'm going to activate this layer right here again and just take an eye to lining all this up. I want this to be right about in the center of all this and you know take into account that I'm gonna have that text caption down below. Okay now let's add that drop shadow. I right click blending options. Okay I'm gonna pick let's see if I can get this now drop shadow really harsh by default okay I just clicked the checkbox now I'm going to click on the st style and then let's just drag this way out let's just really soften that drop shadow um, maybe that was a little too much let's see probably about 14 px is where I'm going to stop and then let's change the angle of lights I'm going to check uncheck use global light and let's make the light come from the same direction um, as the light that appears to be coming from behind his head. And that'll just kind of make the whole page more um, cohesive. Okay, so let's see what our effect is looking like. It's still pretty intense. I might want to take down the opacity slightly. And um, yeah, that's the only other change I'm going to make. We'll just, that's kind of softened it even more. Okay, 
So now we have our banner. I'm going to take a second here and explain. Um, I'm going to save this for web. Now, when I save it for web, when I choose file, save for web, you know, I have a quality setting up here. It's going to be a JPEG. Um, I'm not resizing it, but I can resize it right here. The quality setting is, is going to compress it. So when this is saved, you know, it's stripping down. It's going to be about 10% of the size that it is now um, and download very quickly. But that is that does come at a price. I mean, we're going to lose this quality um, at, during this compression. Say that we later on decided that the slider wasn't uh, was too too wide and we needed to resize it. Uh, so we would need to resize all the images in the slider to be consistent. Um, that's going to cause a problem if we continue to use the image that's already been saved for web once. If you've saved for web and you've optimized your image, then you've lost information. So you don't want to save for web twice. You always, always want to go back and get your original image, um, the PSD file that you were working with, or you know just the original artwork and start over. Because you know if you're saving on top of things uh, multiple times, then you're going to seriously have a problem. You're going to lose data each time, and the image quality is going to continue to degrade. Okay, I'm going to hit cancel on this because I think that I left my drop shadow effect off, and just hit file save for web and I'm going to leave it set at 70 that's nice and compressed and I don't see much of a quality loss and click save and you can tell I've already done this once and I'll replace that and we're going to go up here and I'm going to go back to the baby banners mod I'd actually you know I'd already done this but I did have the recorder turned off so I'm going to delete that selected baby banner right there. And then I'm going to upload it. So change image, choose file, Shetland Wolves, open, apply. And I can set the position. I want it to be 60. Uh, act now to take advantage of these great savings. Okay, so now we have our little caption in there. And I'll click Save. I'm not putting a link for this image. Client can do that later if she'd like. And I'm going to set it to my image slider. Because it doesn't have a banner section, it's just popped up to the top. That's just the way this Baby Banners mod works. Oh, the phone is ringing off the hook. Okay, sorry about that. I always love it when my customers call. So, you know, it doesn't have a banner section yet. We need to assign it one. I'm going to assign it to that image slider and choose it as active. And that's going to push it down to its proper place in the list. Okay, so there it is. Um, and you can't see it, but this image is much cleaner than the, ones, the other ones that have, I believe have been resized twice. So, you know, now let's go back to the front and just see that we have our image. And we do. Okay. Well, guys, thanks so much. I really enjoyed sharing this with you all, and I hope you learned some things. I know all this wasn't specific to Xcart, but it certainly is specific to any kind of image you want to edit, uh, to CSS in general, and uh, gave you some tips for working with the Baby Banners mod if you have that installed. So... Uh, good luck in all your e-commerce efforts. Uh, thanks again, and I'll see you soon.